Here we are, everybody. Good evening. We are now live. I uh, want to welcome everybody to tonight's 100% live and interactive Q&A with, honestly, you know, it gets all embarrassed when I say things like this, but literally probably the most popular TV director I've ever met in my life. Everyone I hear speak of this guy says nothing but amazing stuff. It's Mickey Jones, the king of serial drama. Here he is, Mickey. Good evening. Oh, Ross, you make me blush. <laughs> Hi, everyone. This is a, give everyone a wave, Mickey. Show everyone your... Hello. Give everyone okay, your, your hands. Thanks for joining us. I thought you were oh, going to put your comedy, hands. your comedy hands on. Don't want to offend anyone like, hello. Yeah. <laughs> He's got his comedy pencil hands. Um, right, all right, everybody. So I can see um, people joining in the chat. You've all done very well tonight. People have actually logged into this chat already, Mickey. Normally, I'm like, oh. come on, guys. Um, log into this. So I can see, I want to say hello to Dawn, Carly, Tim Paley's in the house, John's here, Patrick's here, Lindsay's here, Richard Haler all the way from Miami. Oh, hello Miami, you okay? He's in the house, Mary's here, Kim's here, John's here, Craig's here, everyone's just piling in. Um, can you hear us loud and clear first of all? I think people can because Kim said evening Ross and Mickey and so is Tim, so is John, so is Mary. We are good to go. So Mickey, how this works basically, all these guys now can see and hear us, they're going to just be asking anything they want basically on directing casting auditioning working in soap working with you anything goes basically so um are you up for answering anything that comes through whatever yeah come on bring it on bring Literally, it on <laughs> whatever he's an open book this guy so whilst people are getting the questions ready uh mickey we'll just have a little chat for a minute um what have you been up to tell people a little bit about your background what you kind of normally direct what you what's your favorite soap i mean can you can you say they're all like your children Oh, I can't really pick a favourite one because I'd offend too many people. Um, basically, I started where I, I started out wanting to be an actor, like most most of the people. So I think I'm in a good position as I've been on both sides uh, of the coin. So I do know what's expected of you as actors when you come to auditions and stuff. Um, so I, basically, I transferred. I, I was sort of my playing age was 15, Ross. And right, I was okay. growing out of it. So <laughs> so I thought, my God, I need something else to do. So I started basically making short films and stuff. And I took one of my short films and I gave it to one of the producers of Family Affairs. I said, do you have a little look at that? And I pestered her a little bit. And in the end, she said, oh, all right, you can do an episode of this. So that was about 12 years ago. I did one episode of Family Affairs. And oh, who's ringing out, you now? They're saying, Mickey, you, you, you're famous. We're seeing <laughs> you on, on Act on This. <laughs> um, so basically, she let me do one episode, and that was about 12 years ago, and I've never looked back. And that was Scottish power, that. <laughs> that was Scottish power. Brilliant. Yeah. They can they can wait till later. Yeah. So no way. So so initially then, so yeah, I mean, I remember you telling me this story when we met for a coffee in uh, in Media City, and it, it was a real kind of struggle. Then the first time she 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 blow you out and say no, and you ended up taking it back like months later, just in terms of like showing people like tenacity counts, you know, and sometimes when you get a no, first of all, it is all right to ask again further down the line. Is that? I'm sure that's what happened, wasn't it? Yeah, it is. I, I believe that you've got to be a little bit cheeky, but no, obviously, don't cross the line. What happened was, obviously, multi-camera is a very fast sort of beast, really. you just got to knock it off quick. So for them to take a chance on a director who's only done single camera would have been, you know, a big risk for them in sense of money. So that's why she was a bit reluctant. So I was actually acting in Family Affairs at the time, and I used to say to her, oh, just let me do one episode. In the grand scheme of things, if it's a disaster, then it won't really matter, will it? It's only one episode. And she'd go, no, 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 you can't. And I'd go, please, one episode, one episode. <laughs> I was keeping it light. And in the end, she went, come up and see me. So I did have to force my way in a little bit. But, you know, thankfully, she gave me a chance, really. Yeah. So. yeah. Sometimes you just got to do it. Like you say, you got to be cheeky, not not mental and like, you know, like to the point where people end up hating you. But, you know, if you get a yeah. no, first of all, it is all right to bide your time, you know, look at it a bit differently, approach it a bit differently and go for uh, go for the ask again. Um, let's have a look here. So everybody, I can see everybody's everyone's on now, Mickey. I can see uh, quite a few people have just joined as well. Um, so everything is going well, loud and clear, technically. Start putting your questions in, guys, basically. So, Mickey, what are the are the soaps you direct like now? What are you working on right now? Just so these guys kind of know what's what's relevant like in 2018. 
Right, so I'm starting work on Emma Tail on Monday. Um, so I've got my scripts and I'll be doing my prep from Monday onwards. Three week prep, then we start shooting. What is the prep? Um, just just let us know what the prep is for a director, because you know it's different for us as actors. But what what do you actually what goes into it as a director? Well, um, obviously because we're in multi camera, so every camera person, every single person on the floor, boom ops, and everything, they all need to know what's being shot on that day because every scene is so quick and has to just fly through. So for for my prep, I read the scripts, I. Um, Go to a meeting with all the producers, discuss what they want, what we're gonna what we're gonna do. Then the scripts go away for a little rewrite. I put a little bit of impulse in saying, Well, you can't really see the cafe from the garage, you know, little things like that. Because yeah. a lot of the writers don't go to the sets really. So um so I so we put our notes in, the scripts are rewritten, they come back hopefully at the end of next week, Friday, then I'll camera script them, say all the shots what I'm gonna do. So so basically, I try to get as much as that done as possible. Um, and then I plot what the actors are going to be doing, the characters, I plot the characters' journeys through. Then I give it to everyone, they type it up, I sit back for two days, then we shoot. It's a lot of bloody work, isn't it? It is a lot of work, but um, <laughs> the problem with it is it's a lot of work. But like all of us, you never do it to the last minute, do you? Yeah, oh. that's it, absolutely. <laughs> like, ah! last night. Um, so, yeah. so when you walk on a set, you've literally, you know, like at the start of a week, you know... Well, every shot you're effectively going to shoot in that block. Um, you sh for your shooting week, yeah. Well, to the way I play at Ross is I basically do the camera script and I've got sort of, because uh, that's like a skeleton of where we're aiming, where the actors will be, where cameras will be. Um, I like to see what people are going to bring with them. Your actor might come up with a better idea than what I had or, you know, they know the backstory better. They may say, well, I can't sit here because I've never spoke to him in two years. So... I, it is a skeleton and a framework, but I'm quite up for changing it, you know, so it's just something to hang the day on. Um, most of the time, it just comes out like I want it, you know, as I planned it. Um, so, yeah, that's it, basically. But I'm open to going, oh, no, OK, let's change that or let's put that there. Yeah. Or then, you know. It's nice from an actor's perspective, that, because you can bring your own ideas to the table and not feel like, you know, oh, I can't say anything. So it's a bit more collaborative, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, well, I, I learned early on, though, if you give actors too much time to think, it's fatal. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm saying that as, uh, I, I know what you're capable of. I'm saying that as an ex-actor. Um, so a lot of the time, really, there isn't time for massive discussions on soap. So I think if they trust you and they know that you're coming from the right place, usually people are quite happy just to to go along with what your vision was. But as I say, if someone comes up with a better idea, I'm quite happy to take the credit for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can say that. You must you must come up with great ideas, Mickey. I put that tweet out yesterday and look at all the soap people who were just like tweeting, going, Oh, Mickey's amazing. He's a oh, and he's I a hoot. How how funny are you on set, Mickey? Um, to be honest, I try to be serious, Ross, on the Monday of the shoot, but usually by lunchtime I've forgotten about that act and I've just gone back to me. Just gone You've back got... to himself. You've got to keep it light, and I think you work better if people are in a happy environment. I think you get more out of people, and I live by the philosophy, if you do a job you love, you'll never have to work a day in your life. So I like to keep it, I like to keep the energy up. It's, when you've got busy days in the Woolpack or the Queen Vic or the Rovers or the Dog, they can get apps, you can, you can just become crushed by it, particular studio days. So you've got to sort of be on your game, but you know, not get too, not to get too into your own headspace. You've got to keep it nice for everyone. Yeah. And what about what about castings? Because a lot of the questions that are going to come through tonight, I know are going to be out casting, and they're going to be like, right, Mickey, how do I work with you? How can I get, you know, in front of these casting directors at the uh, at all of the different shows? Um, do you keep them light? How do you kind of relax actors when they come in and the, you know, honest to be honest, they're probably shitting their pants. Well, they are, and there's no, you know, I once I read on, on a website, someone said, I think it was the Spotlight website, a casting director said, her tip for actors going into auditions was don't be nervous. Well, if you could not be nervous, <laughs> then, Brilliant. you know. Um, obviously, I think, I think you've just got to bring something of yourself to it. And I think the best thing to remember about casting is, literally, the director and the casting director want you to get the job. They want someone out there to get that job. No one's plotting to not give you the job. So you've got a good chance. If you've got in that room and you've got it, just relax. Try and enjoy the experience. And, you know, as I say, we want someone out there to get the job. We don't want, you know, we don't want to go through it all again. <laughs> God forbid. I, I, I've got a problem though, Ross. I'm going to give everyone the job. 
Yeah. I hate it because I was going, oh, they were good, but I like them as well. Oh, anyway. How do you, like, in, in situations like that? Because, I mean, how, how, what are the are the make or break things in a situation like that? If two people come in and you're like, I like them both, I know they'd be great on set, um, they can both do the job. What, I mean, what are the extra things that aren't necessarily talent that people can bring into the room? And you're like, I'm going to choose him over him or her over her. Do you know, a lot of the time, Ross, to be honest, um, you look at all the people, you get different sorts of people in all the time. And, and at the end of the day, I think you wouldn't be in the audition if you weren't any good. So a lot of the time it does come down to, oh, well, she's got black hair in the fringe and so is Chaz. Oh, wait, she's five foot two and Marlon's six foot seven. So uh, you take into, into the bigger picture. You've got to think, oh, well, we can't have like five blondes in a scene. Or, you know, you, you, you have to look at it all. On yeah. that. So, so sometimes people might be absolutely brilliant and they don't get the job and it will be because of something stupid like that yeah it's just one of them one of, them just things. One of those things yeah and th that's why i think if you think you've done a good audition and you think you've you've nailed it and you don't get the job the likelihood is you have done a good audition and they will remember you for a later date it's it, i know it's easy to say don't get in your head don't despair but don't get in your head and don't despair because if you've done a good job, you feel like you've done a good job, you will have done a good job. I believe that. And people will remember you. Yeah. I always remember people, people who have auditions and they never got it. They always stay in my head, especially when I'm working with Faye from Emmerdale. We always go, oh, what about them? Oh, remember them? Oh, let's do them. So, so you know, keep the faith, I say. If, you, if you've done good, you've done good. Yeah, people will take solace in that, going, listen, you know, and we say that on practically every single broadcast or interview or podcast or anything that I do, um, everybody says that, you know, it's like, don't, if, if you go in and you just do a good job and if you don't get that role, don't panic too much because, like, you know, we will remember you. We will bring you back. There's a lad I know who uh, is a member of this community. He's been seen by Cory 22 times now. He still hasn't got a role, but I'm like, they've got to be seeing something in you if they're bringing you back 22 times in the last couple of years. I mean, that's an insane number of auditions not to get a role, so I don't quite know what's going on. But, that is, um, yeah, that is a bit, uh, that's pushing her a bit. <laughs> a little bit mental, isn't it? Do you, anyone watch Emma Dale? There's a fabulous character in it called Lydia played by Karen Blink. Yeah, yeah. Um, Karen auditioned, used to audition a lot, a lot for Emma Dale. And, um, and the last job, the last time before she auditioned for Lydia uh, was a policewoman or something. She didn't get it. She really believed she had it, um, but she didn't. And it's just one of those things. So then three weeks later, she was brought in for Lydia, which she got, which turned into a regular character and one of the best characters on the show. So... Everything just happened for a reason. If she'd have played that policewoman for two scenes, she wouldn't be Lydia, you know. So, you know, you might go, oh, shit, I didn't get it. I'm devastated. But there's something better hanging out there for you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. How do how do those those roles kind of occur when that you know you you I've been like as I said to you a minute ago before we went live. You know, I played this guy Dave Dixon on Corey a few months ago, and um, and I genuinely thought, oh, the storyline around this it could definitely have legs. Um, it didn't because the characters around him actually have subsequently left um, or are leaving, so that's not going to go like that. But how do those those uh, characters that are just supposed to be in it for a couple episodes end up being in it like full time? What what is there a bit of magic that happens there? Um, do you know what? I think sometimes the right...